Let's talk about the Polaroid One Step 2. And if you're on the fence about this camera, I'm gonna go ahead and say you should probably order it because the first round sold out and the next round won't be here until mid-November. So if you wanna get one for yourself or as a gift for the holiday season, might as well put your order in now. Hey fellow photographers, what did you shoot today? So we're here with the Polaroid One Step 2, so let's start with the unboxing. Well, I mean, there's not much to it, right? There's the uh, camera itself with a neck strap. There's a charging cable and the instruction booklet. Now, I would like to point out one thing on the first page's instruction booklet that I think really speaks to sort of the way Polaroid's going and, and the direction that they're going. And, you know, let me just read from here. It says, inspired by the original one-step camera from 1977, which is this old guy, the Polaroid One Step 2 is an analog instant camera for the modern era. It takes a moment and turns it into something you can hold, something you can share, something real. And I really think, I really like that. I really think that it, you know, sort of gets at the heart of photography. Photography is about, you know, not only taking pictures, but making prints. And it's a very social interaction. You should be sharing those prints with others. And this camera is a great way to do that. So let me start off with saying one thing, one very minor thing that I don't necessarily like about this camera, because, you know, we'll start with the bad and then we'll get into all the good stuff. So the shutter release button, which is right here, is, is really close to this flash. And Polaroid recommends that you use flash for every single photo, because this is a very narrow aperture lens, very small opening, lets a little bit of light through, so it needs a lot of light, so that's why the flash is on by default. And depending on how you hold the camera, you might be blocking part of that flash. And this is like a very minor inconvenience, but you just have to be aware, because this camera needs a lot of light, even with the 640 ISO speed film that it uses, you don't want to block any of that flash and you only want to turn the flash off in direct sunlight. So just be careful how you hold the camera. You can't, you know, you can't manhandle it like this. You have to be very conscious of where that flash is and kind of hold your hand to the side. So minor gripe about that. The only other thing I can criticize is that if that you're a left eye dominant shooter, this camera is really built for right eye dominant shooters. So holding it up to your right eye and looking through the viewfinder, left eye is a little tough because of the back of the camera is uh, kind of in your way and you know you have to press your cheek up against here and it can be a little uncomfortable so if you're you know used to shooting with your left eye you know you might be you know t t it might take you a little bit to get used to this camera but other than that I can only sing high praises about this camera but maybe it's first important to take a step back and sort of explain what this camera is in order to sort of set the expectation because this is not necessarily you know a top of the line instant camera it's a one-step camera, which means that everything is done in one step. It's very automatic. You push the button, you get a picture. It's not manual focus. It's not any of that stuff that some of the older models, that uh, the original Polaroid models have. So it's not going to be like that, but let's talk about where this camera kind of the idea for it came from and what kind of cameras from the past it's sort of trying to emulate. So now you may think that the Polaroid One Step 2 is sort of a continuation of the original Polaroid One Step, and it's not necessarily the case. They're very similar in design, and obviously the new camera is modeled after this camera, but the original Polaroid One Step land camera from 1977 actually takes SX70 film, which is that slower speed film. The new one takes either 600 film or I-type film, which is that 640 ISO film. So they don't take the same film, so don't think you can go from this camera to the other camera with the same pack of film. Obviously the design features are very similar, you know, you have a front-loading thing with a with a tongue that comes out, you have your red shutter button, you have your exposure compensation dial, you have your viewfinder, and you have a fixed focus lens. But there's a couple more features on the new camera that are more similar in a way to this, which is a Spirit 600. Now this is a very basic 600 series camera. So imagine the Polaroid One Step 2 as the sort of combination of these two cameras. Designed like this, but kind of with the features of this. So in the Spirit 600, this is a very basic 600 series camera, viewfinder, a light and dark meter, which we kind of will have on the new camera as well, but also has a flash and uses the 600 series film. So it's kind of like this with the design of the older one and in a sort of compact form factor. So let's go over some of its features. So what do we have here? Like I said, we have our viewfinder, we have a light and dark meter, so we can change the exposure 
by one half stop in either direction. According to the manual, it's about one half stop between light and dark. We can lighten and darken the image. We have a built-in flash, our shutter button. This is the film release button to open this. There's film in here, so I'm not gonna do that at this point. On the back, we have two you know, hooks, eye holes for strap here. We have an on-off button. We have our port for USB charging. Now the camera did come with some charge, but Polaroid recommends that you charge it fully before using it the first time. And there's another button on the back here that is to manually turn off the flash. You actually have to hold that down while taking the picture. So in order to turn the camera on, we're gonna flip this switch in the back. What's really cool is that we have these LEDs on top, these LED indicators that are gonna tell us how many shots of film are left out of eight. So there are eight indicators, there are eight shots per pack. So there are four left in this, if you can see those little four dots there. there. And then the obvious advantage is there is now a self timer button, which gives you about a 10 second self timer. And on the bottom, there's some instructions on how to use the camera, you know, stay at least, you know, two feet away is the minimum focus, focusing distance. Flash operates from about two to 15 feet. Keep the light behind you and it says always use the flash because this is a fixed lens, so there's no focusing and it has a very small aperture like we talked about. So it needs a lot of that light, so keep that flash on. There's also a threaded tripod mount on the bottom, which is great if you wanna set this up and then use the self timer. Now let's talk about build quality here. So build quality is made from some really nice plastic. Now the older cameras, you know, they had that really I don't know how to describe it, but it's like that really sort of, it feels cheap in, in a way. You know, it's sort of that molded plastic. This has a really nice feel to it. It's, it's kind of got this matte finish and it just feels like a quality product. It's got some weight to it. And I mean, it just feels very nicely finished. The biggest surprise about this camera was the viewfinder. It is one of the brightest viewfinders I've ever seen. I mean, it's almost, you know, as if you're looking normally, there's no hindrance, no obstruction of light. It's big, it's bright, and you see everything. Uh, I was so impressed by the viewfinder when I saw this. Now, there is gonna be some parallax error between that viewfinder and the actual lens because you know they're offset. We're not looking through the lens like we would in an SLR, but that's just something you have to be aware of. Uh, and it gets worse as you get closer to your subject. But like I said, the minimum focus distance is two feet, so it's not too far off. So you, know, you just have to kind of adjust. You'll get used to it, adjust accordingly. Now as for film, I've already made a video, which I'll link here, talking about the different types of film and different types of formats, but this camera is either gonna take 600 series film or the I-type film. Now there is no reason to spend the extra $3 on the 600 series film because this camera does not need to be operated by the battery contained in this pack of film. You can use I-type film, which has no battery because the battery is you know, in the camera. It's charged via USB. And I think the spec says somewhere around you could run like 20 rolls of um, film through here, 20 packs of film before you have to charge the battery again and it has like a 60 day standby time. So, you know, not a lot of energy is being used. You know, even if, even if you're popping off the flash every single shot, the battery, you know, is said to last a long time. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Another good thing about that USB charging is that if you use like an old camera with the 600 series film and you don't use it for a while and the batteries run out, you're basically, done there's no way to shoot that film again and whatever sheets you have left over whatever however many negatives you had left over basically goes to waste so here even if it won't fire because out of batteries and you still have film in there with the eye type film you can just charge it up and then you'll be able to use the camera again it's all about setting expectations this is a great entry-level camera i think it's priced at that range it's priced at 99 dollars, which is you know basically the entry-level market now this is not going to give you the same quality images from this lens as say some of the more advanced glass lenses like the SX70 lens or even the Spectra lens from the older cameras. What it is gonna give you, it's gonna give you an assurance that it's working. You know, it's got fresh rollers. There's not gonna be any of those streaks and lines from those old crusty rollers on those used cameras. And this viewfinder, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a blast to use. I mean, it's a really fun camera. It's, it's very simple. It's a one-step camera. Again, shooting, you know, just one button, get the shot done, very simple to use. Anybody can use this camera. It's just point, you know, it's just pushing a button. So for that, for an entry into the sort of Polaroid instant film world, this is a great first release from Polaroid, definitely drawing on the iconic design of the past and bringing in some new features that I think a lot of people will be very happy with. And I'm gonna conclude with what I think is one of the most important things about this camera is that by buying this camera, you're sending a message 
to Polaroid slash Impossible that there is a demand in a market for things like this, and we want to see them continue to create things, continue to you know develop their film chemistry, and it really you know it's putting money in the hands of Polaroid. When you buy a used camera, you're putting money in the pocket of some person who's selling you the used camera. That money is you know no longer going to Polaroid. By buying this camera, you're giving your money to Polaroid and saying, hey, we we believe in you. We you know we support you monetarily. We want to see you come out with new things, and this is a great first step. I would love to see a revamped SX70. I think that would be absolutely incredible. Um, I think the Spectra series, especially like the Spectra Pro, is, is pretty advanced enough. I don't think that you can improve much on that because that Spectra Pro has so many features that we'll discuss in a future video. But honestly, like an updated SX70 or even some new format camera using the same film but in a, in a different style, maybe like a TLR or something, I think there's you know, the possibilities are endless. But by buying this, you're really, you know, putting your money where your mouth is and supporting the company. Yes, you can get cheaper versions on the used market. You can get the old version on the used market. You can get a 600 series camera on the used market. But, you know, going forward, showing your support, I think, you know, this is a great price point to get into the instant camera world. And, you know, this is, you know, from this limited testing that I've done with this, it's very robust. It's gonna last you a long time. And, you know, you're not gonna have those problems that you have with maybe the older cameras because they are so old, you know, they're. 30, 40 years old at this point. So having something new in this case um, is really something special. And of course, over the long term, you know, because you're using iType film, which is, doesn't have a battery and is $3 cheaper per pack, you know, you could save money. Now, arguably, if you buy like a used Polaroid for $40 and then this is $100, the difference is $60. So you'd have to shoot, you know, 20 packs of film to make up that $60. So that's a lot of film. Um, but in the long run, if, if you're you know, going to use this, and I'm pretty sure that going forward, you'll see a lot of other Polaroid cameras use the iType film, because I think that's sort of the, 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 the draw to new cameras, is that you know, you have, can you use the cheaper film. So it sounds like a lot, but in the long term, I think this camera will pay for itself in the film savings if you're passionate about shooting Polaroid. So that was sort of my first look at the One Step 2. I've been shooting a little bit with this camera, but you know, I'd like to get a few more packs of film under my belt before I fully you know, make a decision and share those pictures with you. I have done some color tests between the old and new Impossible Project film, so the old Impossible Project and the new Polaroid Originals film. I have done some color testing with that camera, and I'm also working on testing the SX70 type film, which is a different emulsion, so I want to get you know, all, the, all the bases covered when it comes to the differences between the films. So look out for those videos coming soon. And I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Have you already bought one or are you planning to buy one of these cameras? If you have any questions or concerns, leave them down in the comments down below and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Again, doing a little bit more testing and then we're gonna have some sample images here soon. So if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to this channel to stay up to date with the latest and greatest from Polaroid Originals and other videos concerning different educational things in photography. I have a whole bunch of other videos and playlists that you can check out. Uh, you know, dealing with aperture, shutter speed, depth of field, all that cool stuff that you need to know, the fundamentals of photography. So stay tuned for more Polaroid stuff and more educational stuff on the side. And until then, as always, happy shooting.